Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I want to show how you can take a dry driveway and make it wet in Photoshop so you don't have to go outside and be hosing it down. It works for other pavement. I'm going to show you three different examples here and the trick to doing this is that anything wet it reflects and that's the key to this now you've probably seen other tutorials on how to make something wet using plastic wrap uh, filters other stuff like that in Photoshop but there's actually it's much simpler than doing that when it comes to driveways and most pavement there's very simple techniques that can be applied to give that wet look when you need to now this is something that can be common in Southern California throughout the desert Southwest because in the heat of the day when it's hundred degrees outside and it might only be 20 30 percent humidity by the time you have everything hosed down it's already starting to dry in certain spots also it might not look as well if it weren't right after a rain because during a rainfall it's going to be very saturated that pavement's going to be a lot different looking also another problem if you try to do this the old-fashioned way of spraying everything down is that everything can get wet so the street can get wet and just patches of it can be wet that might not look good also the sidewalk the grass different areas so this is a more even way to do it showing what would be then the best case scenario of showing a wet pavement after a rainstorm but without having to do it and of course doing it during dry weather so I'm going to show three different examples ready to get started and see how this is done let's go Okay, so this is our first example that I'm gonna do, and it's a finished product here, um, and it was fine delivering it like this, but it would, though, look better if this were to be having a, uh, a more uh, wet type of look to the pavement. And this technique, by the way, does work best when you're seeing a lot of driveway, when you're seeing a lot of pavement, because as you can see, driveways, no matter how they are, unless they're brand new and even then it can be iffy, there's a lot of spots that get on there, so they're not always the best uh, showcase item and when you're shooting wide angle that tends to occupy a lot of the frame so anyways to the technique very simple take your layer and duplicate it so this is the finished layer could have been a flattened image after your post processing but anyways I'll just duplicate by doing control J number of different ways to duplicate it now I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 50% that's a good right about there now I'm going to flip it vertically so I can get this reflection started. So I'm going to go up to edit and then to the transform and then I'm going to flip vertically. Now the trick is to line this up. So using the move tool, and I'm going to hold down shift so it stays straight up and down, you want to move it to where it starts showing reflections. Now, you don't want to get it too far. You want the most highest point of the house, which would actually be right in this area if you watch that. I don't want that to hit the driveway, otherwise there won't really be any reflections there. So the natural reflection would show up at some point right about here. If I zoom in there, you can see what's going on here. That's the portion of the house. We want it to come up just a little bit so it's just starting to overlap. You can see it also with the garage door. We don't want it to be too high. So it has to come up into some region. Anyways, we go out, we'll zoom out, that's fine. And let's add then a layer mask, so layer mask hide. Now what we want to do is make an outline of the driveway. An easy way to do that for something like this, go down to your other layer, the one that's your base layer, take the quick selection tool, and then quick select that area. And you can see here it's selected the street, sidewalk, all that plus the driveway. Go back up here to the top layer, invert those colors, we'll get them the default colors, re uh, revert that, and then just hit the delete key. Okay, now that's a heavy reflection. It's way too much, but we can see where we are. Did it get where we wanted it? That looks pretty good. So let's drop that opacity down to about 30%. And that's starting to look a little more natural, but we're going to take it even further. Now take your erase tool and make sure that your colors are white and black. So here they're black and white, so we need to invert those by hitting X. Take the erase tool then, and at a low flow, I'm going to use a 10% flow you can see up here, and I'm going to start erasing some of this off of here. So especially, this doesn't need to have that much. Any shadowed areas would probably not reflect as much, so you want to make sure that you really eliminate that in any shadowed areas. Like this shadowed area here that came off the house, it would be reflecting would hardly 
hardly show up as a reflection. It'd be something bright that's reflecting down. So we just erase that. Now, it's not as much would be on the sidewalks. So we can just erase some of that. So that's starting to look wet. And you can adjust that opacity as you see fit to start getting some of that reflection back. It might be good at, let's say, 26%. So now the other trick, like sometimes you have other tutorials I'll show to use like plastic wrap or other type of filters. All that I find is necessary is maybe just add a little bit of Gaussian blur. If you think this still doesn't look natural, just go up to your filters, take a look at then a blur and then Gaussian blur. Just adjust it as you see fit. Usually a small amount of blur is fine. You can see here, once we get up to about like five, it's really starting to blur quite a bit, probably too much. So maybe right about three uh, would look pretty good. So anyways, that's all there is then to making that reflection. This was a pretty easy example to do it. When this was all said and done, the final one looked like this. Okay, so let's move on here to the next example. So once again, very similar driveway. Let's repeat the process, duplicate that bottom layer, turn the opacity down to 50% and flip it. We're gonna go to edit, transform, flip vertically. Now we're gonna move that into place and once again, keeping it so that we don't have too much of the, uh, the overlap. So for instance, down here, you can see where the driveway starts. We don't want that, we want that to be up higher. So especially you can see where the planter is. So that's our highest ver uh, vortex point in this like triangle of looking at wide angle at a house. So right about there would be good. Okay, so we'll zoom out. And then we'll go layer mask hide, and then we'll select the driveway. So go down to your base layer, use the quick selection tool, and then select that driveway. I'm gonna select everything around there. Now, once again, if it overlaps, it doesn't matter. You can erase some of that. And that's the idea too, is you're gonna blend the edges anyways. Go back up to that reflection layer, the one that we flipped, reverse your colors, and then hit the delete key. Boom, you've got that. Unselect that. Now you can start playing with the opacity once again. This might be good. Oh, maybe this one starts looking good at about 32%, some of the reflection. Now remember though, what we're gonna do, let me get back there to that 32% or so. We're gonna blend this in. So take your eraser tool, reverse your colors so that they're white and black, and now will erase it. Now, once again, the shadows won't reflect as much, so you wanna start to uh, erase more in the shadow areas, so they wouldn't reflect near as much. Not nearly as much on the sidewalk either, probably a little bit too much of the house coming up there, and also when we get near the front porch, there's not gonna be hardly anything reflecting there, but you're able to then control that amount, okay? That looks good. Now, this might not be the prettiest uh, look at reflection because we're seeing the telephone pole in there, but it does make the driveway look wet. If you wanna make that then a little bit more realistic, add a little gauzy and blur to it. So we can go up to the filter once again. We could select Gaussian blur again because it's already selected, but let's just select it so we can see what all we can do with it. So Gaussian blur, this would be at about 2.5. Up it a little bit. Maybe that's good right about there, 3.9. But just anyways, just a little bit to show that more natural look, okay? So not too bad. Now, once again, this can be done for just about any type of pavement. So in the last example here, I'm gonna take this one. Now, one of the problems of wetting pavement or making it look with this faux wet is that it's gonna show detail sometimes. And especially when we get down in here, we can see this is just kind of a mess. Uh, this is very common with pavements. It's very hard to keep them cleaned and power washed all the time. So when you go out and shoot them, you've probably seen water stains, rust stains, all that. Very hard to deal with, okay? So anyways, we'll use the same technique, Control J to duplicate that layer. We're gonna change the opacity to 50% so we can start seeing where it is once we do the flip, which is then to edit, transform, and flip vertically. So now we move that into place. Now this is a tricky one because we want some of the patio to show up. We don't want too much. So kind of where would we put that? That might look good right about there. Let's just say that's good. So we'll go layer mask hide. Now we need to select that pavement, go down to the bottom layer, take the quick selection tool, and then we'll select right around this area of the pavement, maybe even over here some, make sure we 
don't select that barbecue, it's not gonna reflect on there and over here too. So that looks like it'd be good. To go up here, maybe a little bit more selection there. All right, back up here, reverse our colors, hit delete, boom, there's our reflection, but let's tone it down first. So let's get our opacity down to about 30%. You can see it's reflecting in there, but it's still reflecting though off of what was kind of a, a funky looking pavement. If we take this away, a lot of rust stains, a lot of stuff in there, it turned out very warm. So if you really wanna take it a step further, you can do other things, for instance, you could go above here and add a saturation layer where you desaturate some of that pavement. So if you were to go to layer, adjustment layer, take a hue saturation layer, and then you desaturate some of that, reverse that mask, so that you can then paint some of that in where it turned out too warm. And what this is doing is this is now, since it's below our reflection layer, it's desaturating the pavement underneath of it. So making that look a little better. Now, still have some overlap here on this. I'm going back up here to the reflection. It was uh, overlapping too much on there. So that was a little bit too much maybe there. And you just start erasing it and blending it where you think this would be best fit, right? So taking some of that away over here, taking it away over there, painting in where it is you want to show the reflections where you don't want to show the reflections. Now we're starting to get something that's looking fairly good. Now we have though these big imperfections that are here. And if you're, uh, you know, you can't really change much of that for MLS. If you get asked by the client to do it and they're okay with it, then you could add more of that in there. How? You could do it with the reflection layer. Duplicate that reflection layer. We'll do a control J on it. Get rid of the layer mask, delete layer mask, change the opacity to 100%, layer mask hide, and now using a low flow brush, let's say about 10%, you could start brushing some of that back in there. So you could get a little bit of that so it shows a little bit more reflection. And that might help a little bit without it, with it, it's a little bit better. But anyways, those are little small things you can do. Um, once again, you can also just keep changing the opacity of that reflection layer to whatever you'd like, and that'll work very well as also. Now this isn't something that I would recommend doing just for a standard MLS shoot, but if this is something that your customer uh, might request, or for instance, let's say you're doing a faux twilight, or even just a twilight itself, and you're just doing a few pictures, you're getting paid for all this extra editing, then it might be worth it to do it. It's something to have in your toolbox to be able to offer your clients as well, be able to set you apart, and it shows that, once again, you've got these different options that you can provide so that if uh, they don't like the look of it, and especially if someone wants to run outside with a hose and me squirting stuff around. I don't like to get water near my gear at all. And once again, shooting in the desert southwest, that stuff just dries up too quickly. So anyways, I hope you like this tutorial. I hope that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.